What's up, guys? This is your Cosmic Homegirl, and I'm doing a weekly forecast for everybody for the week of April 7th through April 14th, 2019. So we are moving ahead through the month of April. Um, if you want to know how any of these energies affect you personally by your sign, I do have monthly horoscopes for the month of April available. Just click on the link in the, um, the description area below the video to go to my website to the section to where you can download those. All right. So this is just general for everybody. Like what's the weather that's in the air, the cosmic weather, the the vibes, the energy, what's, what's going on. Okay. So one thing I wanted to say, you guys know every week I've been talking about this dang Venus and Mars square. Oh my goodness. This Venus and Mars square has been ugh, like so frustrating for the last month. I'm going to say like the last month or so. First we had it, um, squaring in Aquarius and Taurus, and now we've had it squaring in Pisces and Gemini, but you know what? I think the mutable square isn't as bad because mutable energy can like flip and switch and change very quickly. But fixed energy, fixed sign energy, which is um, Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius, and Leo, when there's stuff in those signs, they don't want to change. They want to stay the same and they act very stubborn. Uh, mutable, you know, Pisces and Gemini is included in that. It just wants to keep things moving. It's like, Oh, I feel a certain way. And then, oh, you know what? Let me run from these feelings and flip the flip this script, you know? So um, I don't think this Venus and Mars square is as bad, but still it, it can be quite frustrating, especially with um, regard to relationships, because it doesn't matter what you identify as, okay? As far as your gender, if you're masculine, if you're feminine, every relationship has someone who's more masculine, someone who's more feminine to do the yin and the yang thing, right? So because of that, um, this, it doesn't matter what <laughs> you're open to. Uh, if you like dating other humans, this can be a frustrating aspect. But the good news is it's starting to dissipate. And I think I'm going to say the seventh is when it really is like fading off because um, I use an eight, I use eight degrees of separation between the planets as like a general rule of measurement, you know, to, to count something as a very strong aspect or very strong, um, you know, energy being beamed between the two planets to really cause something. So, um, yeah, this is Mars at four degrees of Gemini. This is Venus at 14 degrees of Pisces. So, yeah, I'm going to say like maybe the the sixth, the seventh. Yeah, let's, let's say like the, the seventh is um, when this starts to break away this Venus and Mars square. Um, but we do still have Venus conjunct Neptune, which I'll talk about in a second. We have Mercury conjunct Neptune still as well. It's going to be fading off this week. Now it's moving away from Neptune, but it's still within the fog, within the realm of the fog. So um, we do start the week with this energy. Venus, Neptune, and Mercury all sandwiched together in Pisces. So uh, what does the, what does um, Neptune and Pisces like? What what does that energy represent? Well, it can be very spacey, very idealistic. It's all of, it's your dreams, like your literal literal dreams that you have at night. And since Mercury rules your thinking, your thought processes, um, you know, a lot of us we do have these like we are having these crazy psychic revelations and dreams that have messages and. Maybe we're connecting more to the spirit realm, to the angelic realm. If you believe in any stuff like that, it, this is a good opportunity to have this energy be very strong. So the messages come through very strongly. Um, but as you could see, oh my God, in here for me, it's not still not the best for communication. <laughs> it, communication can still be a little off, a little wonky, a little shaky, um, very unclear, very confused. So... Like I said, it's moving away. Mercury's moving away from Neptune, but it's still in shadow period and still within the vicinity. Um, so forgive people if their communication is off and weird. Th this rules, uh, Mercury rules data and information and Neptune can rule losses, things just dissolving away and you don't even know where they went. So there's like weird things that have been happening to a lot of people like, you know, messages disappearing, emails disappearing or getting lost or mail getting lost or um, any type of correspondence, you know, it doesn't matter if it's written text, um, 
or whatever or spoken it's like things can just be weird like you say something and someone's like huh I didn't hear you or oh I forgot you know there's there's still a lot of that going on and also losing track of items um you know where's my keys where's my glasses where's my wallet I lost my debit card all that good stuff still kind of going on this week and then we have Venus in the mix and Venus does rule our material goods our material items that we like so um and Neptune rules losses Venus can also rule money so there is an easier um like a chance of of money and material things being lost and also stolen because this is unfortunately when there's a lot of mutable sign energy in the air I don't know what it is about people they just act a fool they just have very little respect and they just want to be tricksters and do the stupidest dumbest things um so you know just be careful I, I think this whole month is kind of riddled with some of that energy so this is another month to where you need to um, be, keep track of your stuff, man. You know, just uh, make sure that you're not leaving things open, unlocked, um, you know, any obvious ways that can cause things to be stolen. Because, I don't know, people just get mad disrespectful when there's mutable energy in the air. And no disrespect to, to the mutable signs. I mean, I have a mutable moon. And it doesn't mean that I participate in any of this, like, stupidity that mutable energy it's like low vibrational dark side mutable energy is trickery and deceit and um you know promising things to people with no intention to deliver or you know maybe there could be the chance of you really just think that things are going to go a certain way and by the way all of this energy is going to be squaring jupiter this week as well um and that can be jupiter is optimism and jupiter is slowing down and it's about to go retrograde so yeah, there can be some things that come up that are really good promises or, you know, you think that you can really achieve something, but you're not seeing all the fine print. You're not seeing the details, the important information and not seeing consequences and stuff like that. So that could be going on um, this week. It, it, it could still be very strong, very strong. So um, yeah, but we do have Venus conjunct Neptune on the 10th. The 10th has a lot of crazy transits popping off actually so um venus conjunct neptune let's let's skip ahead to the 10th to see visually this conjunction here yeah see they're both at 17 degrees of pisces um so let's just say like super early in the morning maybe like really late at night on the 9th is when it's exact exact yeah so we'll say like super late at night well I'm on the west coast I always tell you guys that um so yeah you know if you're in the western really western part of the world it's more so on the 9th but um a lot of people are on more east so you know if you're anything east of like California <laughs> uh California the west coast it's gonna be on the 10th okay um so yeah Venus conjunct Neptune what does this mean so this is Venus is love, yeah, romance, dating, and all that stuff. So Neptune is um it's fantasy, it is escapism, it's also art, like that type of art that comes from creativity that just flows through you and you just channel from seemingly out of nowhere, but we who are into astrology, we know that it comes from Neptune beaming down some creative vibes, just making you let loose and feel and through that you know art is based on feeling and emotion so um neptune knows no boundaries it's about just pure divine love unconditional love and just feelings of that so through that we feel that and we can express how we feel through venus and venus also rules creativity and art and an appreciation for it and art being materialized so these two together can create some really dope art. Um, if you're feeling anything in regards to a relationship, you can turn it into art or poetry or something. You know, I've been like on that poetic tip. I've, you know, this has been building up, even though I'm recording this like in advance of this day, um, it's still building up, but it's just like at its strongest and at its exact, um, the 9th or the 10th of April. But yeah, it's, uh, it's bringing that poetic energy, you know, who is the epitome of Pisces energy. I'm going to say Janae Aiko. She is a Pisces sun and moon. And I think she has Mercury and Pisces too. And then Erica Badu is also 
I think she's the same. I think she's also sun and moon and Pisces. Um, and they're both Sag rising. Yeah. So, you know, they, they really can come up with some great, um, poetry and songs and stuff based off of their emotions and pain and even not just pain, but like good feelings too. And Janae Aiko, she actually wrote a book of poetry called Two Fish. So we are all under this Janae Aiko, Erica Badu type of a vibe and, and influence. Um, and then also Prince. Prince was very Neptunian in nature. Only He only had his moon in Pisces, but he had Neptune in the sign of his ascendant in Scorpio. Um, and I think he also had like his moon trying Neptune and he just had like a lot of Neptunian energy, you know, different equations within his chart that that come out to uh, this type of a, of an energy being a strong, you know, part of his personality. Let's just say that when you think of his songs, they were like poetry, too. Um, so, yeah, just we're, we're in that vibe this week, you guys. So it will be cool. It doesn't matter what type of music you listen to. If you know of any artists that are very Neptunian in nature, very Piscean in nature, I mean, um, Kurt Cobain was a was a Pisces, very Neptunian guy, very sensitive. I think he was like double water, like Cancer Moon and Pisces Sun. And it's been a minute since I looked at his chart, but anyway, like yeah, even if you listen to that type of, to like rock music or it doesn't matter what you listen to, like tap into some of those Pisces artists, um, artists with Neptune conjunct the Sun or you know, if you know their chart and they've got that vibe, um, you, it's it's really easy to get on their wavelength and understand the music and feel it a lot more when we've got this type of a conjunction happening. Um, so it's very beautiful for that, very beautiful. But Venus and Neptune together, once again, that can rule losses of things. So especially the ninth, the tenth, you know, hold on to your stuff. If if uh, take it from a Taurus, Taurus is my stuff we're into our stuff okay we're possessive over our things so we will tell you ways to protect your things your stuff so this is something that you'll have to do even more around this day because neptune dissolves boundaries and people can like i said get super disrespectful not see the boundaries between themselves and you or themselves and your material items and possessions um this can also lead to maybe some unrequited love situations. And I really hate saying that, but it's absolutely true because this is fantasy and this is projection and seeing somebody as this gorgeous, like movie star, like person that can do no wrong and you put them on a pedestal. And so if you are newly dating someone or just meeting someone around this day, it could be a little, um, a little difficult to see them for who and what they really are. The red flags would just have psh, like fog sprayed all over them. You know, you'll spray paint the red flags in your head and turn them into purple or gold or something. And they, oh no, there's nothing wrong. I, what? They do this? Oh, so they snort coke. You know what? It's cool. I mean, I, I, I'm going to pretend I didn't see that or oh, everybody has their vices. Ha ha ha. I'm just going to skip along and go along with this person and think that they're the greatest thing ever so yeah it can be kind of um <laughs> meeting someone around this day starting something new around this day when it comes to love can be a little touchy okay um so just be cautious be aware be awake let this air, air we only now we only really have the sun as far as like any um inner planets we only have the sun in aries and sun in aries doesn't play it's fire energy it's like you know, very um, head first, so it can be impulsive. But at the same time, it's like, it's not afraid to speak out and say things like, yo, that's not cool. So uh, if you find yourself being a little too idealistic when it comes to love, use this Aries energy to be like, you know what? Uh, nah, that's not cool with me. I'm not, not going to stand for that. And just like, you know, run off or something. I don't know. But anyway, this energy is so beautiful. If you're an artist, if you're a spiritualist, that means if you do any type of spiritual or light worker work, um, this energy will have you channeling like crazy. Um, yeah. And you know, what's funny is, um, with all this Neptune energy in the air and Neptune and Pisces do rule angels and spirits and, and, um, connection to that side. And I've just started to tap, to tap into, um, a couple of the angels, the archangels. And, uh, I mean, I have kind of worked 
a, done a little bit of work. Um, I work with angel cards, angel tarot cards, and I love them. But as far as the angels directly and asking them, you know, for things and reaching out to them and calling them in for stuff, I've never really done that myself. Other people that have done readings for me have done that. And it has helped, but I've never really done it myself. But I actually did that myself for the first time. And I really do feel like it is very healing and helpful. So, I mean, that's just a personal experience that I can use to validate this whole thing um, of the spirit world being alive and well. And also, you know, like I said, with the last couple of weeks when we have Mercury and Neptune in the mix and now Venus too. Venus, you know what? I feel like Venus being in Pisces is really helping to clear up some of the BS that Mercury uh, in shadow in Pisces conjunct Neptune has brought about. Um, she's really helping us to harm, to harm on, oh my God, why can't I speak? Uh, to harmonize things, to balance things out. She's really helping with that and to enjoy more of the Piscean experience, you know, instead of it just being all tears and being in your head and crying and like, why? I don't understand. And oh my gosh, and just totally drowning in emotion. Venus is like, no, nah, let's enjoy the energy of Pisces. Let's, you know, listen to some music, watch some good movies. Let's go see some good art or create some good art. Um, so anyway, that's what this energy is. And on the 10th is when we have the highest potency of Venus and Neptune in a conjunction with each other. So yeah, very beautiful. Okay, so also on the 10th, um, we have some not so beautiful <laughs> energy. Um, we do have the sun in a square aspect to Saturn. So let's move this ahead a little bit. Uh, Saturn is at 20, 12 of Capricorn. So yeah, um, yeah. So on the 10th, we have the sun in a square aspect to Saturn. So this is a little bit of a frustrating energy, but you know what? This can help to ground us a little bit if we do try to go too far off of the Pisces deep end with things. Because this is grounding Saturn. And, um, but, but it is frustrating because Aries energy wants to just push forward and jump and be impulsive and just do stuff and not even ask permission, not ask too many questions. Just do and jump and fly. Why not? If you bonk your head in a wall as a, as a, um, a darting ram, it's like, who cares? That's what we do, right? That's how we do Aries, right? Uh, so, but then Saturn is like, uh, hold up. Okay, Aries, where are you going and why? What are you doing? Do you understand the consequences of your actions, Aries? Do you understand that there are rules to things? You cannot just go this way or that way. Um, you have to have a solid plan. And what is your pathway um, that you're going to be darting ahead on? Is that pathway straight or and narrow or is it wide? And do you know how to... Saturn and Capricorn asks all of those questions. And the sun in Aries is like, oh, I don't even care, Saturn. Like, I just don't. I just want to do. But, you know, these two energies can work together to really execute some um, some awesome plans. And they can strategize things together. It's like, uh, you know, Captain Saturn can give um, Soldier Mars the orders. I'm sorry, uh, Aries sun the orders to carry out. And they can really present a lot of strength for you to push ahead through things this can be a good saving grace for anybody who's especially if you're a water sign um and there's all this water energy in the air yeah it's beautiful and creative and all that but it can still create some some deep emotions that are too deep that are causing you to like cry and reminisce and you know a lot of stuff that just really drowns you and like cripples you it can still cause that. And this is energy to push through. And especially for the fire signs as well, because all this Pisces energy is happening in your water houses, in your water houses and very sensitive areas of your life, in other words. And so um, the sun and a fellow fire sign and then pushing ahead with Capricorn Saturn in, you know, in an earth sign, which will for the fire signs be your, your earth houses as well. Um, this is definitely going to help you to say, you know what, I'm, yo, I'm a fire sign. Like we don't, we don't do all this crybaby stuff. We, 
we may do it for a minute, but we got to get back to work and doing what we do, which is pushing ahead in life and inspiring everybody to do like we do and have energy and strength that we do. So this can actually be a challenging energy that pushes you to get off your butt pretty much. Um, it doesn't matter what sign you are, but I was just naming the signs that may be affected the most. And once again, if you want to know how it affects your sign, um, I do have horoscopes available for the whole entire month for each sign that like only focuses in on the energies for your sign. So this is on the 10th that this is exact. And then also on the 10th, this is when Jupiter goes retrograde. So um, Jupiter is going to go retrograde for four months, starting with April 10th. So on this website that I use, planetwatcher.com, um, once we get to a retrograde, that's when like the numbers will turn red. So that's what I'm trying to skip ahead to do to see around what time it goes retrograde for those who are like super nerdy and detailed like me. Aha. Okay. So it's in the evening of the 10th or if you're in the Eastern part of the world, it could be the next day, um, which is the 11th. So this is when Jupiter goes retrograde 24 degrees of Sag. So it's been slowing down for a sec. That means it'll stay around the same degree for a hot minute while it's slowing down. And then it'll sit here at this degree. It'll station, you know, and then it finally turns retrograde on the 10th. Um, what does this mean for us? Well, Jupiter in Sagittarius. Um, I spoke about this more in detail on the, the monthly forecast. Um, so you can go tune into that for more details. But just letting you guys know this week is when it turns retrograde, okay? It means that big picture stuff, like when Jupiter moves forward, especially in its home sign of Sag, Jupiter and Sag are both about the big picture, not always looking at the fine details of things, um, not always caring about the consequences and taking big risks, which can lead to success sometimes. It can lead to you having a lot of faith in your own actions and um, just jumping ahead and going after things. This is why Sagittarians seem to be so quote unquote lucky in life. People say that they're the luckiest sign. And I used to always tell all my Sag friends, like whatever magical money tree uh, you guys have, can you please give me some seeds so I can plant my own? Because somehow you guys always come up <laughs> with money out of nowhere. Like literally you pull it out of your butt talks or it falls from the sky. Like, how do you guys do it? They're always winning at the casino. And like, I don't know. I Sometimes I'm very envious of Sag energy. Um, even though I'm on a Sag mission myself based on my progress chart and my North Node in the ninth house, I'm on a mission to like try to understand the Sagittarian ways. So I'll ask Sages all the time, like, yo, like, how are you so lucky how do you always land opportunities like I have a friend who has a Sag stellium and she seems to always land these high profile jobs not saying that she doesn't work hard she's been to school she's had you know she's got degrees and stuff too so I know that's part of it but she just always has so much faith in the fact she's, she's like oh yeah girl um you know what I'm bored at this job and I want more money so I'm just gonna apply for another one and meanwhile, I'm over here working these mediocre jobs all the time, like, oh, I don't know, I'll just grab another one. It's another dollar an hour more, so maybe I'll just go after that. And she's like, oh, yeah, this job's paying 20K more a year than the last one. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I got the job. I'm like, 20K more a year. Like, yo, how do you do it? Please share your Sagittarian secrets. So anyway, they just have a lot of faith, you know, and they, they're not afraid to take risks, even if it's like, um, <laughs> kind of reckless risks sometimes but anyway that's what Jupiter rules and set it's in its home sign so there's a lot of that that's been going on in the air with a lot of things but now it's time to go inward and to look at things still from a higher perspective but try to see them on a smaller scale if that makes sense um, and not just like only see the goal and just jump but see the steps to really get to that goal so that's what Jupiter retrograde can have us doing because retrograde planets make us go within and turn within, you know? So um, that's what Jupiter retrograde is going to do. So from, I'm sorry, uh, April 10th through August 11th. And um, also Jupiter is going back from 24 to, I think, 14 degrees of Sagittarius. 
And so that means, um, let's see, the last time we had 14 degrees of Sag was January. So anywhere from January on is um, what Jupiter retrograde is going to be reviewing and revising and having us look at from a different perspective. So wherever Sag is in your chart, wherever Jupiter's transiting, that's the area of life to where this is going to be happening. So also, um, yeah, so that's what's going on on the 10th. A lot of like important aspects. And then on the 12th, we have Mercury making a square aspect to Jupiter. So let's skip ahead to the 12th. Uh, hello. Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah, so Mercury is going to square Jupiter. And um, when this happens, so it could be like, if you're on the West Coast, it's late at night on the, the 11th, but it could be the 12th pretty much like the whole day. Okay. Um, so this is Mercury at 24 degrees Pisces and it's squaring 24 degrees Jupiter in Sagittarius. So what does this mean? Um, and it's still within the realm of Neptune. It's only, it's seven degrees away from Neptune. So it, I'm counting that as still a conjunction. So, um, what does Mercury square Jupiter and conjunct Neptune mean? It means we're still not in the clear, you guys, as far as making really important decisions that you just want to jump after and go after without checking everything first. So it's not saying to stop your life and to just hide your wife, hide your kids, hide your dog, hide yourself. It's saying that you need to just be a little more cautious and aware and take your time making decisions before you make them, if they're major, especially. And don't get too caught up in like idealistic points of view and be stuck in your head thinking that what's in your head is is everything and is the only form of reality that there is. Because there could be some other things going on that you're just overlooking and you're not even seeing, you're blind to them. So it's just letting you know that with your thinking and your mind to not let it go too far off, you know, to where it's like, Things are totally unrealistic. Um, this is a square aspect. So squares are challenges, yes. But, you know, this could be challenging also. Um, sometimes a square to Jupiter is not always like, hey, try not to go too far with things. It's also a challenge of don't be too small with your thinking also. Like, how optimistic are you? This Mercury and Neptune and Pisces can have us, once again, drowning with an emotion stuck in our own head and thinking our reality in our head is the only reality but there are there is something outside of that and maybe you're not letting your mind expand enough to see that because Jupiter is about expansion now when it's retrograde it is more about contraction more about contraction than expansion so it's going within but still I feel like this could be just challenging your faith in things and your ability to be optimistic, what are you optimistic about? Is it over or or optimistic or um, not optimistic enough? Uh, there's just a lot of what's real and what's not that's going on around this day. Very strongly on the 12th. So on the 13th, this is when we have the sun in a square aspect to Pluto. So this is the sun at 23 degrees of Aries and then Pluto is squaring it at 23 degrees of Capricorn so um, once again a square is like something that's four because you know how an actual square the shape is four corners that's how you can remember what a square aspect is in astrology because it's something four signs away you count the sign you're in first which is Aries one then you go two three four anything that's four signs away one two three four okay so that's how you know it's a square all right so um the sun and Pluto are squaring each other. Mm -hmm. This could be power struggles. Because as I mentioned earlier, this is the soldier Mars, the captain, the general, the higher rank, the boss, the authority figure of Capricorn. And Pluto is like, ooh, he's kind of that scary boss that, you know, he's a little creepy, doesn't always say much. But when he does, it's like, yes, sir, don't kill me now. <laughs> <laughs> don't sneak up and kill me at my desk or anything sir it's that kind of a boss so um yeah this is maybe some challenges with authority this week for some people challenges with authority figures you just want to do what you want you want to be rebellious and you know what I'm saying but 
then these two influences in this bossy, authoritative, uh, enforcing the rules signs, and these rule the government too, um, or Capricorn rules the government, so does Saturn. So there's some power struggles this week, you guys. Um, so it could be with authority. This could be an inner struggle with your own sense of authority. Um, but there's just something about like breaking the rules or following them. Like which way do you want to go? And what are the consequences of which way that you go? Like you, you may be checked on some stuff. We may be checked on some things this week. Or we may feel like checking other people on their actions or um, presenting consequences to them. So if you're a parental figure, if you are an authority figure of any sort, that can mean in your personal life or in your business um, dealings, then this is a week to where you'll really be expressing your authority and enforcing it. Um, if you are more on the Aries sun side, not saying you are an Aries sun, but you're in bot, you're, you're tapping more into the energy of the Aries sun. Like you're just a free spirit. You just do what you do. You don't like to be told what to do. Um, yeah, you can be mad agitated at this, <laughs> at this aspect. Um, this can also rule cops too. So don't do anything stupid this week. I know Aries energy likes to just bang its head into stuff and do dumb stuff a lot. Um, and it can make people reckless and just impulsive, but your impulsive actions can really be checked this week. So that's all I got to say about that. But the sun square Pluto, Pluto is power. So yeah, there is power struggles. Aries is the first sign. It's like, I'm a boss and a leader too. What you talking about? So, um, yeah, there's, there's power struggles this week. All right. So on the, finally on the 14th, um, we're going to talk about the sun making a trine aspect to Jupiter. So, you know, we do have this challenging aspect with the sun square Pluto, but also at the same time, uh, we have, hello, why doesn't it skip ahead the day? Okay. But at the same time, we've got um, the sun trine Jupiter. So this is on the 14th that this is going to be happening. So um, the sun trine Jupiter, this is more optimism and faith. Now, trines are positive aspects. Don't get me wrong. You know, it, it, this can be lots of belief in things going your way, lots of belief in the outcomes of things, how you envision them. But this can also mean like there's some power struggles and there's some consequences to things that you're not seeing or that you don't want to see. And it can further influence some people to be mad, impulsive, and just kind of you know, jump and do something dumb. And then uh, now you got to get checked on it. Um, but for some people, they are utilizing this energy to their on a high vibrational level, and they are using it to get things done. They're struggling within themselves with their own personal power, and their ability to have faith and belief in their power and in their actions. So that's what's going on this day. This trend, this aspect alone is really nice for um, just helping you to be more happy-go-lucky and stuff. But we do have this going on at the same time, which is like, uh, uh, you can't be too happy now. What are you doing? <laughs> so um, that's what's going on this week, you guys. I did forget to mention uh, one detail about Mercury and Jupiter squaring each other this week. Is um, This is actually a repeat aspect of what was going on like mid March, March fifteenth and sixteenth, and then um, the twenty around the twenty second of February, so it repeated itself because Mercury was retrograde. It was forward, then retrograde, now forward again. And whenever we have um, a retrograde planets, they do go over a certain point three times. So um, yeah, wherever Pisces is in your chart, um, you know this is where you can have something repeat itself from mid March and or the end of February. Okay, so that's it for the week of April 7th through the 14th of 2019. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget I have your monthly horoscopes per sign available for download on my website, which is indigomoonastrology.com and it is below. And if you'd like a reading, a personal reading of any sort with me, please hit me up on my website as well under um, services slash rates of services. And also I have my specials page, which has some different special readings that I offer too. 
Um, I'm thinking of doing some sort of special because this is my birthday month. I'll try to come up with something for you guys and announce it if I do figure something out. So just stay tuned for that. And I will see you guys next week. All right. Peace.